Hey, let me ask you a question. If you could add up all the money you've ever had, all the money you've made, all the money you've ever had, if you added all that up, how much would that be? Think about that. And then answer this question. How much money do you have in your savings account? If you can think through that process, the chances are you're probably not too happy with that answer. And if that's the case, then stay tuned because I'm going to tell you how to solve that problem. So stay tuned. So if you're not happy with that exercise, if you're not happy looking at how much you've made and how much you have left, it's because you need to change the way you think. Remember we last week we talked about a paradigm shift, looking at the same thing but being able to see two different things. So we need to learn how to look at things differently and I'm going to give you 15 rules of money that I've used. I think they've been really instrumental in helping me achieve success and I want to give to you and hopefully even just one or two of these rules could really be a game changer for you. So stay tuned for all 15. Oh, also, by the way, I have something else. I started another video every week for a question and answers. I am taking comments below and I'm taking those out and I'm answering them onto another video. If your question gets answered, I'm going to send you $10 in Bitcoin. If the question that I answer is the most voted on that video, I'm going to send you $50. The only catch is that in order for you to win, you have to be subscribed to the channel. So if you're not already, just click that subscribe button right now and make sure you hit the bell. Be, be notified when um, new videos come up. So you got to make sure that you're subscribed to win the money. But ask me questions. I'm going to answer all those questions on the comments below as I always do. But I'm going to bring a couple onto video. So back to this. Let's talk about the 15 rules of money. So rule number one. Money is a game. Now, most of us have a lot of different feelings about money. Some hate it. Some love it. Some think it's, it's too much work. Some, you know, whatever it may be. But we need to have that paradigm shift, right? We need to think about it differently. And I want to, I want to just challenge you to think about money as a game. So what does that mean? So think about it this way. If, if you were to get a new game, if I were to come over to your house and I brought a game that you've never played before, the first thing that you have to do is you have to understand how to play the game, right? You'd pull the instructions out and you'd learn, how do I play this game? All right. Then after you've learned kind of how to play the game, the flow of the game, you have to understand what the rules are. What can I do and what can't I do? What are the rules of the game? Right. If you think about it like that, then once you've understood what the game is and, and the rules and how we can play it, then we can begin to play. All right. And like all games, you're kind of awkward at first. It's kind of weird at first. Maybe you're not liking it that much at first. But the more that you play it, the better that you're going to get and the more fun you're going to have with it. All right. Like any new game, whether it's a sport or a board game or whatever, if you're going to go play tennis, at first you're going to be really awkward with it. It's going to be really weird to swing the club and the racket and you're, and you're going to be missing the ball. But the more that you play, maybe you bring in a coach, you get some outside um, help, right? You bring in a coach, you play four or five days a week, you're going to get better. And the more time you put into it, the more practice you get into it, the better you get and the more fun you'll be able to have the more that you figure it out. Rule number two, it's a doubles game. Now, not like my tennis example, not a doubles game like that. The way that I like to look at money is I look, like to look at it as in trying to double my money. I'm trying to turn it over. I want to turn a dollar into two. I want to turn two into four, or four into eight, eight into 16, et cetera. And I always want to double my money. It's about doubling. And, and if you think about it, if you have a thousand dollars, you're only 10 doubles away from a million. So the question begins, the game begins to be how fast, how quickly can I double my money? Now, this depends on a lot of factors. One, obviously what you're trying to do, your knowledge level, your skill level, things like that. As you get to higher levels to double a million to two might take longer than to turn a thousand into two. And it also depends on how much you've increased your skill levels. But a couple main factors are really, um, what is your risk tolerance? And what is your time horizon? So if I only have, you know, five years to reach my goal and I need to flip it much faster, I have to work in a certain way. Whereas if I'm young and my time horizon is longer, I can think in a different way. I can figure out what my risk is. Um, but you, you need to start just kind of like with a game. You need to start, uh, or I should say the question I asked you is start figuring out where you are today. 
What do I have? Do I have $10,000? Do I have $1,000? Do I have $100,000? Okay, start with where you're at. Like if you went to a mall and you have like this information board, right? And you want to figure out how to get somewhere. First, you have to start with where you are. How much do you have today? And then what is your goal? Is it get to get to 1 million? And then how many doubles do I have to get there? And then how long will it take me for each double? Hopefully each double gets less and less and less. But in order to do that, you're going to have to increase your knowledge. You're going to have to increase your skills. To increase, to go from 1,000 to 2,000 is pretty easy. Lots of people could turn 1,000 into 2,000, but to turn 500,000 into a million is going to require a whole different set of skills. It's going to require a whole different set of knowledge. But what happens is they all build on top of each other. So as you're going the 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 4,000, 4,000 to 8,000, you're building systems. You're building a base that makes the game much easier. And you'll find that it's much easier to turn a million into two million because you built all those systems. Systems, all those layers, etc. All right. So rule number three, money likes to work. You work hard, right? You spend whatever, maybe eight hours a day, 10 hours a day. You know, I don't know what your work like, like, but you work hard and your money should be working even harder. All right. Think about that. And that's why you've probably worked for a lot of money, but the amount of money you have is less today because money wants to work and money should be working harder than you. So what happens with money is it wants to work. If I put it to work, that money, while it's working, produces more money. So if my money is working, it produces more money for me. The problem with money, though, is it gets bored. If I don't put it to work, if my money is just sitting there unproductive, it goes away. It leaves me. So if I can put it to work, it brings more money. But if I don't put it to work, it goes away. And that's exactly why you've made a hundred thousand or one million. And today you have a small fraction of that because you didn't put it to work and it went away. It's kind of like I heard this analogy before that uh, money is like a big pile of manure. If money is a big pile of manure and it just sits around, it starts to stink. But if you spread it around, it makes everything grow. All right. So think about that. Put, spread money out, put money to work. I always like to say also when I think about my investments and where I'm putting money, whether it's in businesses or real estate, I think money goes where it's treated best. So I live in an area where real estate's really expensive. And because the real estate's so in demand, so expensive, the returns that I get are not that good from buying real estate in my local area. So I buy real estate across the country. Why? Because I want to put my money where it's treated best. I can get better returns there. All right. So money goes where it's treated best. So that's it. Rule number four. Don't be a hater. <laughs> don't be a hater. What that means is that you need to change your mindset. You need to change your relationship with money. Now, a lot of people have a, a negative thought process about money. Uh, money's been hard for them. Maybe they grew up really poor. Maybe they hate rich people. Um, they think rich people are greedy. Um, there's all these different types of things. Maybe um, whatever money you get, you hang on to really tight because you're afraid you're always going to lose it. So you have to change your mindset the way you think about money and you can't hate it. You have to learn to love it and you have to learn to love it for the right reasons. Um, and as you love it, as you, as you try to change the game to grow it, what happens is when your mindset changes, you'll start attracting money to you, right? It's kind of like uh, if you wanted to uh, go on a date and you went out on a date and you said, you know, I hate people that are like this and this and this and, and your date might be going, well, that's me, right? You're pushing them away. So you want to turn, you want to open it up and talk about love. You want to change your mindset. You want to have an abundance mindset where we have plenty. There's plenty of money out there and all I have to do is attract it to me versus like a scarcity mindset, which is like, this is the last $10 I may ever get and I'm going to hold on to it. All right. Rule number five, play your own game. Don't compare yourself to others. You have to play your own game. Focus on your own game. Now, like I kind of said before, you need to know where you're at now and then where you want to go so you can map that out. But where you are today is what makes your own game specific. All right. You, you know, you're at a different starting point than I am or your parents are or your friends are, your colleagues, whatever. You're in your own unique specific situation. And so you need to have your own game based off of where you're at, what your education's like, what your time frame is like, how much money you have. All those factors go into making your own game, right? So you're not in the same game as everybody else. Um, you can't compare yourself to everybody else. What you want to do is compare yourself to yourself. You want to make sure that you're improving every time. You're better than you were last time, but not that you're 
um, better than somebody else. Focus on your own game and that's gonna be a big rule for you for making money. All right, now rule number six, always use a safety net. All right, now that's important. If, you, if you've been to a circus and you've seen you know, somebody walking the tightrope or that trapeze act, you'll notice that underneath them, they have a net, a safety net. And what happens if they were to fall, they have that net so they don't die. It's, it's super important. And with money, we wanna make sure that we always have a safety net as well. We wanna make sure that we have a little bit of money on the side so we can always stay in the game. All right, don't make the same mistake that I made. I've told you about many times where I lost everything because I didn't, follow this rule. And if I would have just followed this rule, my life would have been so different today, but I didn't. I've learned the hard way, so don't do what I did. If, if everything falls through, you have enough money to live off of for a short period of time, you have enough money to get everything started again, to jumpstart everything. There's a saying that I like, and it's, uh, you wanna plan for the best, you wanna be optimistic, you wanna believe that you can do it, plan for the best, however, you have to prepare for the worst. So worst case scenario, if it all goes bad, what's gonna happen? And so prepare for that, have a safety net, all right? Rule number seven, this one's a big one. Your net work equals your net worth, all right? You've probably heard that, you know, some of your five friends is, is the average of where you're at. Um, and so you need to be around the right people. Your network that you're with on a regular basis, they need to be people that are also playing this game of money. They understand money. They're high earners. Now, that might mean, it probably means that you need new friends. And I know that sounds a little bit harsh, but just because you've known somebody your whole life doesn't mean that's who you need to be associated with right now. Doesn't mean that's who is going to help you get to those next levels that you want. As you get older, as you go through life, you'll notice that your friends change a lot based off of who you're doing stuff with and what area of life that you're in. And so you're gonna constantly need new friends. Now, if you're playing this game of money and you're doubling your money every few years, like I said before, you're growing your education level, you're changing your life, and every time you double, or every couple doubles, you're probably gonna need a new set of friends because chances are your friends are not playing the same game, they're not doubling, and so all of a sudden you've doubled your money, you've gone from $1,000 to $500,000, well, you're on a totally different level field, right? You're on a different field than everybody. Um, what you think about, what you talk about, the things that you do are just different. And if you stick with your old set of friends, you're gonna be stuck in your old ways. You wanna be with people who are, who are on it, who are focusing on this, because that peer pressure will cause you to elevate your game. Um, the other thing I'd say about your network is also who you choose to do business with. Um, before I do business with anybody, I want to become friends with them, because I wanna make sure that I want them in my network, all right? Rule number eight, study successful people. We want uh, we want to follow or we wanna study other successful people. There's a quote that I like. It says that success leaves clues. So that means if I find someone who's achieved success in any area that I want, let's say that I wanted to be a bodybuilder. Well, I could look at like Arnold Schwarzenegger's life, and I could look at all the things he had done to achieve success, his workout routines, his diet routines, and if I were to eat the same diet, do the same workouts, maybe I don't have the genetics, maybe I wouldn't work, um, turn out exactly like Schwarzenegger, but I'd be pretty close if I followed the same success clues. So we wanna study successful people who have success, whatever you determine as success, that could be health, that could be wealth, could be family, but study successful people and then do what they've done. We have to increase our knowledge base. We want to see what they did, we want to learn, because what you know today isn't enough to get you there, so learn from them. Um, I learn from business and investing books. I read a ton of books. I use Audible, I listen to audiobooks, I listen to podcasts, that's all I do. I don't, I don't listen to uh, music in my car, my car is a mobile university. Learn, increase your knowledge, study from successful people. You wanna learn how to do marketing? Read a marketing book. You can take someone's years of work that they've distilled down into one single book and you could learn it in an afternoon. It's the greatest return on investment you could ever make. If you guys are liking this content, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, make sure you're subscribed. Don't forget to submit your questions. I respond to all questions. I love to have discussions in the comments section and I'm gonna be choosing questions for this for the new question and answer show. So make sure to leave questions and give me a thumbs up. Rule number nine. 
concentration, not diversification. Now, if you've been a subscriber to the Market Disruptors for a while, you know on Thursdays I talk about investing in cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. And of course in investing, I always talk about asset allocation and diversification. But when we talk about money, the rules of money, I like to think about concentration, not diversification, all right? So it's, it's different, let me tell you. So concentration is more offensive offensive meaning I'm trying to score. So in order to create wealth, in order to make a lot of money, you have to concentrate. You have to focus down your efforts. Imagine a, a river that's flowing and how powerful that river is. But if I dam that river up and I concentrate it down, I could power like the whole city of Las Vegas, like from Hoover Dam. Or imagine a light, uh, like this broad, you know, uh, light, and and it's and it's okay. But when I concentrate that that light all the way down to like a laser beam, it can cut steel. So we want to concentrate down in order to create wealth. Find what you're excited about, what you're passionate about, what you're skilled at and concentrate down to build your wealth, right? That's the offensive. You wanna specialize, you wanna focus. And then you wanna find what's working and what's not working and you wanna double down on what is working, all right? Now, diversification is defensive, all right? You, that's, that's to maintain your wealth. So when we're making our money, we're concentrating our efforts. Then we take that money and then we want to invest it. And we wanna make sure that our, our investments are now allocated properly and diversified. So it's more of defensive, but for, for wealth building, the rule of money wants to be specialized, wants to be concentrated. Rule number 10, earning and not investing. So this kind of plays off of the previous rule. So earning and invest, investing again. So in order to create wealth, we want to be earning it. We want to be in businesses. We want to be in services. We want to be providing value. That's how we earn it. Then we take that money and then we invest it. And that investing is our money working for us. We talked about earlier about money wants to work hard. So money, once you've made the money, once you've earned it, then you want to put that money, so I've worked for the money, I've earned it, now that money needs to go to work. And how I put it to work is through investing. So I put it to work by investing in other businesses, other ventures I have or other people's businesses, um, stocks, real estate, gold, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, whatever, and I put that money to work. Warren Buffett said you'll never get rich until you're making money while you're sleeping. So you earn your money, you work for that money, and then you put it to work, you invest it, all right? Rule number 11, ah, I love it. So it's called leverage. So um, you know, you're know you only able to do so much, and so you have to figure out a way to apply leverage. Leverage is a way that you can magnify, you can multiply your efforts. So um, it was uh, the famous philosopher Archimedes said that give me a lever long enough and I could move the world right? That's leverage, right? You couldn't push the world, but with a lever long enough, you could. And so you want to find ways that you can apply leverage to certain situations. And this, this could be done in a number of ways. Uh, one of the most common ways that it's talked about is OPM. That stands for other people's money. So for example, if I wanted to buy this piece of real estate and I need $100,000, well, I could maybe put $10,000 in and then use other people's money for the other 90%. That could be the bank's money, uh, other private investors. You know, one of the common things that I hear is, um, I can't buy a house, I can't do real estate, I can't whatever, I can't start a business, I don't have any money. Well, you can use other people's money. If you have a good idea, a good investment, money will come. But it's not just money. You can use other people's time. You only have 24 hours in a day. It doesn't matter if you're the richest man in the world or the poorest man in the world, we all have 24 hours in a day. So how do you get more done? How can you still manage your life, all these things, and do all these extra things? You have to leverage other people's time, all right? So that means getting people working for you, whether that, uh, whether that be hiring employees, training your, your kids, using Fiverr, using a job desk like Upwork, um, leverage other people's time. That way you can specialize more, concentrate on what you're good at and leverage other people for the other stuff. Um, you can also leverage other people's ideas. And again, that comes from reading you know, magazines, reading uh, news articles, blog, uh, listening to podcasts, all these things, and you get ideas. And so you're listening to people discuss ideas and all of a sudden you have your own ideas. So you're leveraging other people's ideas 
for your own creativity. You don't, you don't live in a vacuum. You're not, you don't have everything you need all by yourself. You need these outside influences. So leverage other people's time, leverage other people's money, leverage other people's ideas, and leverage other people's success. So again, find people that are successful. Read exactly, see exactly what they've done to be successful, and then use that so you're leveraging that. And using these techniques, you can multiply your results five times, 10 times, 100 times off of doing that. So rule number 11, leverage. Rule number 12 is partnerships, all right? And it's kind of like leveraging other people's um, time, but it's a little bit different. So um, leveraging other people's time, I'll probably be um, hiring people, training people, things like that. In partnerships, it's, it's what it sounds like. It's a partnership. So you're looking for strategic people that you can team up with. And that's the difference of a partnership. Um, it's, you're teaming up with them so that it creates leverage for you, but really what you're doing is, by creating this partnership, you're creating a win-win. So you're looking for a relationship where everybody's winning, um, where I bring somebody in and they uh, market my products to their list, but I also market uh, their products to my list. And now it's a win-win. We're both getting what we want. And and these partnerships, uh, strategic partnerships can be very, very powerful. Um, Always think of them in a win-win though, all right? It takes a lot of time to find these. It takes a lot of time to build them, to set them up, to nurture them. And you don't wanna spend all that time to only have it go away. So you don't spend all that time and then the relationship was no good, somebody's tired of it and they give up and they're over it and they leave. You don't want that to happen. So structure it so it's a win-win. And as a matter of fact, a lot of times I don't mind even losing in the beginning. A lot of times I'll set it up so you win most of it and I don't because I wanna have that equity with you. I wanna make sure that you're happy with the situation. I know that if I can let you get what you want, I'll eventually get what I want. So I'm okay losing in the beginning and you should too, but at least at a minimum, win-win. All right, rule number 13. Money is hard to make, but it's even harder to keep. All right, this is a massive, rule. And this actually goes back to the first question I asked you, how much money have you made in your whole life and how much do you have today? So that answer tells you how powerful rule number 13 is. It's hard to make money. You've worked your butt off for your money, but now you don't even have barely any of it, right? So it's harder to keep. All right. So it's kind of like, um, like I said earlier, where like money, money likes to be put to work. So if I put money to work, then I continue to keep it. But if I don't put it to work, then it goes away. So if I'm just making money and it's just there and I'm just spending it, it goes away. And it, and it, and it goes away really fast. A lot of people think if I could just get a million dollars, I'd be set for life. But the truth is you could spend a million dollars in a few months. It's not that much. I mean, we can see examples of this all around us. Look at uh, the, the rapper 50 Cent. He made like $800 million just off vitamin water alone, not to mention all his you know, best-selling records that he's put out, and yet he filed bankruptcy. We have uh, Johnny Depp, the actor, who's made almost a billion dollars acting, almost a billion dollars, and he's broke. So you can spend money much, much faster than you think you can. And so it's really hard to hold on to. There's all kinds of pitfalls and challenges that you could run into. And so um, you have to be careful. It goes away really fast. One wrong move, one wrong move and it's gone. And, and I also say that losing money is asymmetric. So if I put money into an investment and I lose 50% of that investment, I don't have to make a 50% back to get back to even, no. I have to make 100% now, so it's asymmetric. So you wanna be really careful not to lose money because it's so much harder to get it back. And just remember, it goes really fast, so pay attention to that. All right, rule number 14, timing and positioning. So with timing and positioning, it's important like anything. Timing, timing in, in, in all areas of life is one of the most important rules. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big surfer. I love to be out in the ocean catching waves. And timing is so crucial to try and catch a wave. You have a wave coming at you fast and you have to get the board up going fast enough so that wave will pick you up. If you're a little bit too late, the wave passes you by. If you're a little bit too early, the wave will crash right on you and could, could really hurt you. You have to learn to look at timing and positioning. You have to make sure that you're in the right place. And, and some of those ways 
that would be, you know, so say you have a business, right? You need to know like when I should be growing my business or when I should be downsizing it based off of like what the market's doing. What are the laws and regulations that are changing right now that I should be aware of? Um, you know, maybe the market is, you know, maybe uh, there's the rise of electric vehicles and so the demand for oil is going to be going down. So I should be, lo- I should be leveraging out, getting out of my oil investments, right? There's all these different things and you need to be aware because you need to find the right timing. It's all about waiting for the right time. When do I get out? When do I double down? And when do I go bigger? You know, some of the best fortunes in the world have been made by going heavy when the markets are at their worst, when everybody else is scared, but they jump in and go heavy. But you need to know when that is. So you need to be aware of timing and possibilities. Rule number 15, I left it for the end because I think it's the most important. Rule number 15 is you have to remember it's a long game. You have a long life. Even if you're 50, 60 years old, you still have a long life. I mean, maybe you're like halfway through your life. It's a long-term game. Think about having success at the end of your life. Don't have this short-term instant gratification because that changes all your thoughts today, all your actions. So when I'm focused on a longer-term goal, it changes what I do today. Um, it's, it's, It's the difference of playing chess versus checkers. In chess, the best people that play chess, they're playing many moves ahead. They're waiting to make these moves and they're not playing instantly one move at a time, right? They're thinking long term and that's the key to success. They make, they make all their decisions, all their actions are based off of that. They understand that patience is key. So let's say, for example, like a real world example of this. Real estate for me is kind of like my end goal. I'm continuing to invest in uh, rental properties. That rental income pays me um, interest or, or income. And that's what eventually what I'm going to live off of. And I have money. I'd like to buy more rental properties today. I get properties sent across my desk every day and I find some that I like. However, I believe that the markets are going to be, the markets are very shaky right now. And I believe we'll probably have a market correction coming up pretty soon. Now, timing that is impossible. I don't know. I see that it's going to happen. Is it going to happen in six months or is it going to happen in two years? I don't know the answer to that. I think that instead of buying the real estate project today, if I wait until the market corrects, I could buy twice as much. So if I have to wait two years or three years to buy that piece of property, it's worth it to me because I'm thinking the long-term gain. I don't care if I have that property today or in two years. I want to know that in 10 years or 20 years, I have enough, enough assets, enough income and so forth. And so if I have to wait two years for that deal of a lifetime to come up, then I'll do it. So you want to be patient and you want to be thinking about the long-term gain. So that's it. So that is the 15 rules of money that I think are super powerful that I live by that I wanted to share with you. Um, Again, ask me questions down below. I want to answer these questions and I'm going to pick the best questions to go onto the Q&A show. I'm going to send you uh, free Bitcoin money to do that. Um, Also, make sure you like and subscribe to this video. And that's it. To your success, I'm out.